Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. With the first big major U.S. holiday coming past, I've been kind of lazy looking for new inventory, so I need to get caught up here. Let's start on eBay. The first thing that caught my attention was a rare Steve Jones custom shot from 2008. Now, first you might gawk at a $12,000 price tag, because if you look at this, I mean, it's pretty basic. Got a couple of pinup girls on here, stock from the factory, uncovered pickups, and it's a little bit aged. It's essentially like a Randy Rhodes style custom, except for just a, with a little bit of a different flavor going on here. These were factory reliced, and looks like maybe even came refretted from the factory. That's kind of a cool spec about these. And back in 2008, to have a 70s style Gibson logo like this was a big deal. Now everything else about the headstock, <laughs> that's kind of strange. It's very modern and for that particular era, except for the logo. That's that's funny. I like it. But it also had the volute and you had a specialized serial number. And hey, they even brought back the Gibson Schaller style tuners. Although with the Schaller style tips instead of the ones that they were using back then. Maybe Steve Jones modified his. I'm not 100% sure. You do not see these every day on the used market. Like currently, there's none on Reverb. Looks like at one point in time, Guitar Chimp had one for about 8,000, and that's about where I remember them being. However, in the current market, I could see 12,000 being right just because you don't see these every day. But it doesn't look like this example has as much stand rash on it. So perhaps everything we're seeing here is not actually intentional. But hey, at least we got the COA. Next up, a seemingly beautiful Les Paul Artisan. I say seemingly because it looks nearly mint condition in this first photo, but you always gotta keep looking. These pickups almost look like they're too clean, like they're modern day replacements. Oh, nice! Did you guys know, the first time you get the flip out winding tuners is actually in the late 70s on the Les Paul Artisan. Not every single one of them got it, but that is where they truly got their start. I remember the first time I got one that had these, I thought for sure somebody had replaced them, but that's when I learned that information. This might actually just be an 80s one because it looks like we got diamond posi locks. And okay, the pickups do look rounded, so they might be right, they don't look quite as clean. Oh, a three point adjust matic yes! Yeah, sorry, I'm not gonna talk about the rest of this one. I went ahead and bought this thing because it was way more special than I was ever anticipating. So we'll save the rest of the cool talk for when I review this because I told you guys, every December, I buy a Les Paul Artisan. It's just the way it works out. But hey, what's this down here? Listing not available. Is anybody else getting this error on eBay? Like sometimes it is still there, because it looks like a really cool rare white Les Paul recording. A few moments later. Now it loads just fine. It might be a cookie issue on my part. Now if I had to guess, this had to have been refinished. That is just too clean. It can't be that clean. But that's the cool thing about stock white ones is they have the black binding. So it's got a very good fighting chance that it could just be a very, very well preserved one of these. Headstock's looking okay. Oh, that's cool. The Gibson branded Grover tuners. Those are early 70s. Looks like it's for sale by a guitar broker over in Japan. So that makes it even a little bit more suspicious that it's so white. Maybe somebody just re-clear coated it. Hmm. It says nut bridge tailpiece and strap pins have been replaced. Ugh. There's got to be more to the story. I'd have a lot of questions to ask on that one, but it very well could be legit. But sometimes these brokers don't have the full story, so if you can find it for sale in Japan, you might get the full story. But I was unsuccessful in finding it. Next up, we've got an interesting The Paul here. <laughs> At 3000 bucks, I, I sure hope it's not. So this looks like a The Paul that somebody's like added a double cutaway to, right? It looks very factory done. Well, my friends, this is actually a real model. It's called the KZ2. The problem is that somebody's swapped out the truss rod cover here, so this guy doesn't know. And to be honest, I don't blame him. The KZ2 is a really weird, obscure guitar. It's not really all that collectible unless you just like guitars that are weird from the Norland era. It was a very shortly lived Kalamazoo built version of a The Paul that had a double cutaway. Everything else was pretty standard. But it looks like this one might have some sort of a neck pocket crack, and we've got some wear here. Oh, wow, yeah. Definitely had some sort of a repair going on there. Which is not all that common for such a thick guitar like one of these. But I love the fact that the seller is presenting all the condition issues in a very good way. What do I think this is actually worth? Probably closer to about a thousand bucks in that condition. I mean, generally KZ2s are like 15 to 2,000 in cleaner condition. And while it almost looks like somebody might have replaced one of these pickups because they don't quite perfectly match, these are still worth quite a bit on their own. 
But one day I'll get a KZ2 on the show and then we can learn all the nitty gritty details about them because they are a little bit different than a the Paul at the same time. But how about this? Custom Shop Les Paul Custom Gibson Alpine White Husk and Case. It's got a heck of a lot of bids here. See, when I first saw this, I thought, okay, it's somebody's refinished this. However, now that I'm looking at it, no, it just looks like somebody took the parts off of like a, a mid-2000s Les Paul Custom. <laughs> Why would you do that? Okay, I know exactly what this is now. Who's selling it? MHZ Studio 8. Yep, this is probably somebody who buys guitars from people like UPS and FedEx that get damaged in a claim. They pay out the claim sometimes, and then they take the guitar in its ownership, and then they just sell it off as is. Okay, wow, that's a really new one. That's a 2022. So we got a little bit of finish checking right here. Doesn't look like a brake crack or anything to me. That's just the headstock veneer. You got a little bit of finish checking. Yeah, this is nothing to worry about. But if you bought this guitar brand new and this is what showed up, yeah, 100% you'd want to send that thing back. But that's a really interesting choice just to completely part it out. I would assume this auction will end somewhere in the 28 to 32-ish range. But if you're into parts, I thought this was a pretty interesting auction that's ending before you'll ever see this video. But it's four Gibson necks. Yes, four. The other one's just not pictured with this one for some reason. But we've got like some sort of an L5 neck here. You can tell the truss rod's got some issues here. That'll probably look okay once you put a nut on it. That looks like some sort of a 70s SG neck to me. This one, I'm not entirely sure on this one. It's probably some sort of a 347 or something. Yeah, that seems about right, because we've got the block inlays, ebony fretboard with the crown inlay, but still having all the binding. I'd say that's a pretty good guess. But my goodness, the L5 neck is just so beautifully figured. The problem is, is when you buy necks like these, you just never know if they're warped, if they're in any good of condition. And I'm not experienced at all in building guitars, so if I buy something like this, it just sits on a shelf because I'll eventually use it as like a interesting display piece. But the neck tendons are all intact. You can actually see dates making these pretty darn old. I'm sure there's a luthier out there that can gladly slap this neck onto something else. And so far, it seems like the prices are pretty cheap at 200 bucks a neck. And then you've got this extra spare one right here that has the split parallelogram inlays. Might be an ES345. That could be a lot of fun for somebody. Next up here, there was an interesting Gibson M3. There's many different iterations of the Gibson M3, and I want a complete collection. I just recently got another one, so I'm always on the hunt for all the different variations and like the different colors because I think it would make a really cool wall in the future museum. So it looks like this one, we're missing our locking nut. Oh, well, we have it, we just not have the locking bits. It appears to be in okay shape, but the whole natural finish really just jumps out at you. And the other interesting thing is this particular version does not have a pick guard on it, which is actually a good thing because the pick guards are glued down on that model as well as screwed into place. So if you do remove them, you actually get like a white outline and whatnot. But just in case you're not familiar with the M3, check out this video. They are the best Gibson Super Strat that was ever made. I love those things, and I don't even normally like guitars like that. $1,750 is not a bad price. However, I don't think this is the example for me. Next up here, I was really excited to see. It's the Scorpions Explorer I was asking anybody if they had. We just recently reviewed the Scorpions Flying V, which I've had two or three different people buy and then end up not buying it, and then end up having to back out for one reason or the other. So that is available if anybody's interested. I'm just gonna wait for a slightly cleaner one. But I love Explorers, and I've always thought this design, even before who I knew it was associated to, I just thought it was kind of interesting. Three stripes with another stripe over here. But the coolest thing about these has to be the headstock. And what's even nicer is, hey, look at our giant sign back here. Scorpions. Judas Priest. That is definitely in loving hands. But ooh, those pickups might have been rewound. Because normally you don't have tape like that. Other than that, this one doesn't appear to be in too bad a shape. I mean, the alder bodied and maple necked ones, they tend to get some finished checking here. It's made in 1984. It's a custom shop edition for obvious reasons. Ooh, it looks like Mr. Yobbs has maybe signed it. Yes, indeed. But hmm, nothing about the pickups. It's an open auction, currently at 2900 currently located in Canada. I'd still say it's a pretty good deal up to about 3500 USD. Continuing on, I clicked on this one because I thought for sure it had to be fake. So Gibson Playboy guitars, yes, they do exist. Are they a little bit controversial? A little bit. But with it being an open auction at such a low starting bid, which it does have a bid, I thought for sure I'd click on this and find out it was a fake. But 
It's a super fake. Yeah, we can see right here the metric style bridge. This is not the correct size. It should be a little bit further down if I remember correctly. These are lined up not correctly. Now the question is, does the seller know it's a fake? He's got a ding right here. It's either that or that's reflecting some light, but <laughs> look how bad that is. There's probably a reason he's taking these photos at this specific angle. But okay, he, he does correct himself a little bit here. And we've got some full-on shots where you can just tell. L look, look how boxy that is right there. It's like almost an explorer. Rinky dinky cutaway over here. I'm gonna file this one under, I think they know, because there's no close-ups of the headstock and you can tell that's way off. But to be fair, it looks like they range in a whole bunch of different stuff, so it could just be somebody that got burnt. That's unfortunate, but that's not a real one. But let's give this a look-see, a 1978 Gibson SG project in a walnut finish. I love these open auctions because sometimes you can get some great deals, but you have to know what you're looking at here. So what model is this? If you answered SG standard, you're incorrect. This is technically an SG special and it's from the late 70s, you know, like 1977 through I think about 1979-ish when they made these. Pretty much the only difference between a special and a standard of that era comes down to their dot inlays and I think the specials had a wider nut width. You can check out this video if you need to learn more. So, this bad boy, we've got some sort of a... I wouldn't call that a crack, that looks more like a seam separation line, so you could put that back together and no one would really be the wiser. We've got like a little bit of uh, oil bleed right here, is what it looks like. It's very common for these finishes to get a little bit of discoloration. Typically like around here where you do oil the pots or like the tuners. But this right here, looks to me like the finish has been like sanded away because the late 70s 80s has this like yellow grain fill that makes the guitars look the way they look i'm not gonna say i love it i'm not gonna say i hate it it's just part of the era that i like but these pickups no they're not stock no okay i guess they are i'm shocked somebody has definitely done some <laughs> weird cleaning to them. But I thought for sure the shape wasn't quite right. That's why I always say, get additional photos because you can never be sure unless you see the back. But it looks like we got the nice chainsaw case. The headstock's looking okay. The, the truss rods are all right. It's getting towards limited adjustability. Pickup cavities are looking all right. Oops, <laughs> we lost a screw in here, but whatever. Our serial number dates it to 1978. Looks like we got a little bit of separation going on here. I would guess this was probably in an area of high moisture, like maybe in a flood, maybe even a fire. It's kind of hard to tell, but that could explain why these pickup covers needed to be cleaned off. So you might have some warping to the neck occurring. So that's something to keep in mind with this. But this is all easy enough to fix. It's really not that big of a deal but somebody sanded down that neck and the rest of the body. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I think this one was in a fire more so than water. So these tuners in this condition, looks like some of them are a little bit bent, maybe a hundred bucks. Assuming these tar backs still work properly, probably around 300, maybe 400, mainly because the patina is a bit off on them. Those knobs are worth a solid 100 bucks. Truss rod cover, maybe 50. The husk of the guitar, I'd probably err on the side of caution and say 300. But the case looks pretty nice. That's at least 300 bucks right there. So it's part out value around 1200. So it's being bid on appropriately, but that could be a fun project for somebody. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. Hey, if you need some more guitar hunting fun in your life tonight, how about you check out this one when I thought I discovered a Brazilian Rosewood L6S. It certainly looks like it, but did I really?